25 people in Hong Kong, including pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong, have been charged with taking part in a banned candlelight vigil. This vigil was held to commemorate the crackdown on protesters at Beijing's Tiananmen Square in 1989. Pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong, media tycoon Jimmy Lai, and leaders of the alliance in support of democratic movements in Hong Kong were among those charged. They were formally charged with knowingly taking part in an unauthorized assembly, quote-unquote. Wong and other activists have also been barred from contesting Hong Kong's upcoming legislative elections. The chairman of the alliance, Lee Chiu Kian, was also charged with organizing the assembly on the 4th of June. 13 of those indicted were already facing charges over the same event with some pleading not guilty in the court. The Hong Kong candlelight vigil usually attracts huge crowds. The authorities banned the event in June for the first time in 30 years, citing measures to control the spread of COVID-19. Still, tens of thousands lit candles across Hong Kong. Leaders of the alliance claim that the ban on the 4th of June assembly is purely political. The alliance says that they do not fear political persecution. In a statement on Facebook, Wong said that the regime plans to stage another crackdown on the city's activists. He also said that their voices might not be heard soon and so he hopes the world can continue to speak up for the city's liberty and human rights. All 25 are expected to appear in court on the 15th of September. For more on that, uh, joining us live on the broadcast is our correspondent Richard Kimber from Hong Kong. Hi Richard, uh, explain to our viewers in fur further detail what these charges are all about. And some of them have already pleaded not guilty uh, regarding the same matter. That's right. The, the police's line throughout the last few months in Hong Kong has been very consistent. They've been banning any form of large-scale gathering because of restrictions under the coronavirus. And in their mind, this is no different to any other kind of gathering, so they say. They are simply saying that no large gatherings should be allowed under COVID restrictions. And so they're charging these activists for gathering, as they did on June 4th, to commemorate the Tiananmen protest crackdown. The problem lies with the fact that the public here and the pro-democracy activist camp here largely do not trust this line that it's only because of COVID restrictions. They think this is political persecution, as you've mentioned, and they say that it's unreasonable that the police keep pressing charges against protest activists and pro-democracy activists simply because they're voicing their freedom of speech, which they say is a long upheld tradition in Hong Kong and a freedom that should not be eroded whether or not there is a national security law in place or not. And so it all ties into this same fundamental problem where the pro-democracy activist camp, whether it's been a protest or in this case a commemorative event for the crackdown on the Tiananmen protest back in 1980, uh, 1989, in the same situation the police are cracking down on this now here in Hong Kong and issuing charges against people who are taking part. So there's been a large uh, scale um, backlash against the police from pro-democracy supporters here with regards to this, notably because this was not necessarily, as I say, an out and out protest event. This was a widespread traditional annual commemorative event in Hong Kong which tens of thousands of people took part in in different ways not just a handful of hardcore as you might say pro-democracy activists and that's why it's uh, arousing more frustration than perhaps some of the charges that have been levied against pro-democracy activists against other protest events in the past right and some of these activists have also been barred from contesting the upcoming legislative elections uh, the Alliance members also saying that they do not fear political persecution. But would they be staging similar protests in the near future given the imposition of the new security law is the bigger question. Well, this is what many political commentators are wondering about, because at the moment, everything that's related to the pro-democracy movement is basically being stifled by the fact that there is still 
COVID social gathering restrictions in place here. As soon as the situation stabilizes, which of course everybody in Hong Kong hopes it soon will, the question then arises, will the protest organizers and the commemorative event organizers and anybody who's been trying to organize large scale political gatherings in Hong Kong, will they then be able to apply for the same permits they used to be able to apply for before the national security law was introduced to try and hold gatherings uh, and against the government or against this security law? This is something that Hong Kong has traditionally been very used to being able to do, hold marches, hold protests and so on. But because of the COVID situation, it's really still unclear whether or not that's ever going to happen again. And that's why many of the pro-democracy campaigners are saying that they think it's so important for them right now to continue to voice their opposition because they fear there may never be another protest event, there may never be another commemorative event for the Tiananmen vigil. And indeed, they say there may not even be an election. They do not necessarily all believe that the one-year delay that the government has instituted here on the uh, September 6th election will actually be a one-year delay. They are worried that actually it might be a one, two, three, four, and who knows how long year delay, so they say. And so that's the big question. When these coronavirus restrictions end, will Hong Kong return to the type of freedom of political debate that it used to have before the national security law was introduced? Indeed, we're going to keep a close eye on those developments and keep taking uh, further updates from you. Richard Kimber, thanks very much for the moment.